Pauly's World of Sports Sims proudly presents our brand new series, FHM 7, Birth of the Bolts, as we go through the expansion years of the Tampa Bay Lightning and beyond. This is part number one, because where else are you going to start? And the start date for the first game is going to be October 9, 1992. I should come on camera here at this point. Hello, everybody. I'm Big Polly, and welcome to the brand new FHM 7 series. Um, the arena that you saw in the background on my opening slide was the Florida Expo Hall, and that is where the Tampa Bay Lightning came to be. Uh, the origins of the Lightning go back actually to uh, September 19, 1990. Uh, what had happened was the uh, Florida Suncoast Dome, as it, was, as it was then known, it is now known as Tropicana Field, and that's where the Tampa Bay Rays play. Actually, you know what? I have the date wrong. I'm looking at it, and I have the date wrong. It is October 7th of 1992 is the date of the first game. So let me just fix that and correct that here, folks. Stand by, stand by, stand by. I don't like doing things wrong, although I do. And there you go. That is the correct date. October 7, 1992. I thought it was October 9th was when the uh, Bolts played their first game. Okay, back to me. Uh, on that uh, September 19, 1990 day, it was Tropicana Field. What, was now, what is now known as Tropicana Field. It was known as first as the Florida Suncoast Dome. They opened it up in the summertime. They had they didn't have any, any tenants because they were hoping to get... Uh, a Major League Baseball expansion team, and the expansion team uh, picks of 1990 were Miami and Denver. So the stadium is built and they have no tenants. So the Dome uh, decides to host a hockey game between the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Los Angeles Kings. And Pittsburgh had just won the Stanley Cup in 1990. They played the game at the Trot, well, what's now known as the Trot, but that was then called the Florida Suncoast Dome. 25,500 people and, and more and change go to this game. It sets an NHL attendance record. And uh, Tampa Bay is hoping to get an expansion team. And a couple of years later, it came to be. And they first, they, just, they were thinking, okay, where are we going to play? And, of course, they were thinking about playing an exhibition game at, uh, they were going to play their games at the Florida Suncoast Dome, and that later came to be. Because this, in this dome, you have plenty of room for a hockey rink. Sight lines were not all that great, but you could play hockey there. Uh, and they broke attendance records playing at the dome, as it was then called, and it was later called the Thunderdome, and then later when the Rays moved in, they called it Tropicana Field. Uh, but the first year, they played at this Expo Hall, which was just in eastern Tampa. It's where the Florida State Fair is held every January, February. And the one thing I remember about my trips to the Expo Hall to watch lightning games in 92-93 was it stank. It, it stank pretty badly. They could not get the stench. See, this is the Expo Hall was where they would keep all the farm animals. No joke. No joke, they would keep the farm animals there on exhibit uh, during the Florida State Fair, and they could not get the stench of, I guess it was manure, uh, farm animal manure. I mean, the manure itself was long gone, but they could not get the stench of the uh, defecation of the cows, the aroma of it, out and the Lightning didn't stay there very long. They, they played their one season, and then they moved to St. Petersburg and played several years at uh, what is now Tropicana Field, which is was then the Florida Suncoast Dome, and then they eventually got their own arena uh, in downtown Tampa, a little east of downtown Tampa, a little arena, uh, what they call Ybor City here in Tampa. And they initially called that the Ice Palace, and then they called it the St. Pete Times Forum, and now they call it Amelie Arena. So, let's get started with this very first lightning game, as I am recreating it here, FHM7. If you were watching this channel a few videos back, I did a, a first look at FHM7, so I am just first learning the game. 
and we're going to have a first game against Chicago. And we're going to try to make the videos go at least an hour, so we will probably play more games if time permits. Here's the roster for the Lightning. You got Jablonski and Wendell Young at goal, Bergevin, Chambers, Crossman, Recky, Cote, Ramage. Uh, those are all your defensemen. And the face gen, even in FHM7, it screws up where you can only see the shoulder of some of these players. <laughs> I don't know why that is, and I don't know how you fix it. Uh, the left wingers are Anderson, Hartman, Crom, Brian McRae, and Rob, Z uh, Rob Zaminer. Bradley, Creighton, Brent Gretzky, Ken Hodge, uh, Jason Lefernier, and uh, Larry Nanoff, Manjo, and Semenov. Those are your centers. Cole, the Mayo, and that's it for the right wingers. I only have like a couple of right wingers, so I hope I have a whole bunch of players who could play uh, right wing. Otherwise, I am screwed. Uh, so, in fact, I'm going to look before the game at my free agents, see if I uh, can pull some in here. Let's see. Can I get anybody? Uh, unsigned. Nope, nobody. Upcoming free agent. Free agent center. Spelt as the Canadians spell the word center. Okay, so I need some right wingers. Can I find some right wingers? Uh, just go here. See if I have any room. And I'm going to get... Let's see here. I just need to get the best one, I think. Bergovic. Hey, come back here. Come back here. What are you doing? Offer a contract. I've heard good things about Tampa Bay, and I'd like to sign as if the offer is right. I'm looking for. I have no. There's no salary cap in this league. At least um, I have 17 million remaining, so I'll meet the demand. Eighty-seven thousand in two years. As for the response, I'll submit the offer. Let's pick up another right winger. We're gonna pick up this fellow here. Uh, let's see. We have about five guys who are one and a half star ability and one and a half potential. I'm gonna pick up the youngest, which is Tarasenko. We'll offer him a contract. That way, we have four right wingers at least. I'll meet the demand. Make that demand too. Ask for the response. Thank you for the offer. Submit it. Okay, good to go. So we got a couple of guys signed. Contract signed. Tarasenko signs contract. Okay, so I don't want to play as the Canadians. I want to play as the Lightning. Here we go. I'm kind of learning this game as we go, folks. So, like I said, Setting up the organization. I'm going to play the game against Chicago. Let the AI set up the lines. And my phone is going off again, and it's probably another junk call. It is. Because I've never heard of the person who is calling me, so it's, it's nobody I know. Uh, you got... Ed Belfour and Wendell Young as the goalies, Chris Chelios and Brian Badley. Bradley. So let's drop the puck on this very first Tampa Bay Lightning game. And I have set the speed to fast, but at least you will see the visual of it. And like I said, we're going to go an hour uh, of playing time, so we're going to make these videos longer and play more games. Okay, a face-off. And a goal for Chicago. In real life, the uh, Lightning blitzed through the uh, Blackhawks. But here, it's Brian Anunin, assist from Casera and Hudson at 106 into the first period. And it's 1-0 in favor of the 
Chicago Blackhawks away from home. I believe the Blackhawks were a, were a team that were deep into the playoffs in 89-90 or 91-92. Maybe made the I know they made the Stanley Cup around that time. Okay, face off in the Blackhawks attacking zone. And here are the Lightning on the attack. Who's going to get the first goal for the Lightning? Blackhawks with it. They move into the attack zone. Bergevin. Shot on goal. Saved. Now, I was telling you all uh, yesterday when I did the FHM 7 first look that you don't see the shots on goal. Uh, like you did in FHM 6. But that's fine. We're five minutes into the first period. We have a 1-0 Chicago lead. Tampa Bay with it in their own end. And we have a two-minute minor Igor Larian off. Two minutes for hooking. So somebody going on a power play here. And it will be Chicago. But I love the score box. I love the score box. It kind of looks like a, almost looks like a television broadcast, the way NBC does it with their games. A couple of shots saved by Wendell Young. And we have fighting penalties. Brian Marchment picks up a penalty. And let's see. We'll go to the box score and see who else was in that tussle. It was Rob Ramage and Brian Marchment. Marchment, the first fight in Lightning history. Players tapping the uh, the ice with their skate with their sticks. And off we go. Two-minute minor tripping against Chris Chelio. So Tampa Bay will go on the power play because I know that's a Blackhawk player. Into the attacking zone. Let's see if Tampa Bay could get something going here. Midway through the first period. A one nothing Chicago lead. And a goal. That goal was... Danton Cole, that was for the Lightning. I don't know why the crowd was booing. Cole picks up the first goal in Lightning history, assist by Mike Hartman. Time of the goal, 10-27. And the Lightning still have a power play here. Or where they did. Uh, with the goal scores, of course, that's waved off. 1-1, one, one, first period. Opening game in the 92-93 season for the Lightning. And you still got uh, a couple players in the sin bin for the fight. Seven minutes now left in the opening period. Kind of looks like an air hockey game at times a little bit. Okay, lightning on the attack. And now the Blackhawks with it. 1-1 one, one tie, five minutes left. Try to bring you at least one other game in this... Uh, Wendell Young held the box. So a face-off in the attacking zone for Chicago. So Larry and Anoff is with our guys. Because I just picked them up. Trying to add to my right wingers. 3.15 now left. I just do trades and I just do draft picks. I let the computer do everything else. And unlike when I was doing FHM 6 for Hartford, uh, I don't have the head coach setting on. This is just the computer coaches. I just do the GMing. 
And a goal for Chicago. That was Warmer, assist from Greg Gilbert. And it's 2-1 in favor of the Blackhawks. I hope I got that last name right. With all the French names in hockey, this is going to be a bit of a problem for me. Final minute of the first period. And we have played 20. It is 2-1 in favor of Chicago. Let's see here. We have, we'll look at the box score real quick. Between period shots are 12 for Chicago and 10 for Tampa Bay. Brian Noonan picked up the goal for Chicago. Danton Cole, the first ever Lightning player to score. And Steve Larmer made it 2-1 in favor of Chicago. Penalty minutes are even. And we're going to play period number two right now. Face off. The Lightning had a lovely slogan uh, when they started playing. It was Kick Ice. Tampa Bay Lightning Kick Ice. And they had a catchy little jingle that was heard here in the Tampa Bay area. Of course, we got our expansion team before Miami did, the Florida Panthers, who started out playing in the Miami Arena, and then they moved to Broward County eventually, where, where I think they still are. So 17 minutes and 40 seconds. I agree with Val Red Sox fan that the animation has a problem. When you put it on normal, it's too slow. And when you put it on fast, it's too fast. 16.45 now left in the second, and a two-minute minor on sportsmanlike conduct against Bergvist. Bergvist, and that is for Tampa Bay. Now, of course, I'm doing hiring and firing, so my team's going to be a little different than the real-life Lightning. That was Michelle Goulet, assist by Larmer and Jeremy Rennick. And with 3.27 gone by, it's 3-1 Blackhawks. Here come the Hawks, the mighty Blackhawks. And I probably butchered your song, Chicago Blackhawks fans. I'm sorry. So the Lightning looking to get back in it. And we have hooking against Christian Rutu. And Rutu plays with Chicago, so into the sin bin he goes, and Tampa Bay will get a power play. Two minutes. See if they can get a goal here to cut it to one. Tampa Bay trying to push it up the ice. And a goal! And that is Brian Bradley, assist from Danton Cole. Cole having a big game today, a goal and assist. And it's 3-2. I don't know why they're not cheering. Why are you booing your own team, Lightning fans? So 3-2. Twelve and a half minutes left in the second period. And in every video I do, I'm going to try to do an hour. Try to give you some more games. And of course... One of my other projects is ending, so we're probably going to do some stuff during the week as I can. Cross-checking, Carl Dyquist. And that's for the Blackhawks, so another power play for Tampa Bay for two minutes. Five gets excused from the face-off drop. Slashing against Chris Chelio, so now Tampa Bay with a five-on-three advantage. But can they capitalize? Young with a good save. That would have been embarrassing to give up a goal. Short-handed, a short-handed by two goal. And the Lightning having trouble keeping it in the attack zone. Now it's down to a five on four. And Chicago gets out of the power play. Dyquist. Called for tripping, and Tampa Bay with another power play. They drop the puck. They look for a good shot. 
And again, they can't keep it in the attack zone. They got to come back out with it. Face off. 61 excused from the drop. And the Lightning getting opportunity after opportunity, but they cannot score. It's 3 2. And that power play expires, so we're back to even odds. Five on five. 635 now left in the second. I never ever envisioned myself as a hockey announcer. I could do football, I could do basketball, I could do baseball. Holding the stick, Mark Bergevin, number two for Tampa Bay. So Chicago now with the power play. Now watch, they'll score on it. Saved by Young. Face off. Tampa Bay on the attack, looking for that shorthanded goal. A minute left in the power play. Five minutes left in the second. Watching the very first part of the brand new FHM 7 series. We did about 31 parts of FHM 6. And I didn't have much luck with the Hartford Whalers. In real life, Tampa Bay made the playoffs the four, in their fourth year. So that's kind of my goal is to get them to the playoffs in four years or less. And after this first season, they would start playing at the, at the Dome in St. Pete. Minute 54 or so left in the second period, a 3-2 Chicago lead. Wendell Young saving shot after shot after shot here. Final minute of the second period. Both teams looking for points. I think this is back in the year, era where they played a five minute overtime and after the five minute overtime, it was a tie with two seconds left in the second period. Bergquist gets called for unsportsmanlike conduct. So with two seconds left, end of the second period, it's 3-2 in favor of Chicago. 20 shots for Tampa Bay, 21 for Chicago. Let's see. Anything sticks out. So both teams playing well, I would think. So that's, like I said, our 21-20 penalty minutes about even. Tampa Bay hitting 22-15. And I don't know what the rest of the stats are. So back to the Expo Hall in front of 9,235 fans, which is about the capacity of uh, the Lightning's Arena in the eastern part of Tampa. The Lightning were not the only team ever to play in uh, the Tampa Bay area. Unsportsmanlike conduct against Frederick Stillman of Chicago. So a power play for the four on four now for 31 seconds and then Tampa Bay will get a delayed power play. USF used to play their basketball games before they built their Sun Dome at the Expo Hall. And a goal, we're tied. Bergquist Assist from Creighton and Zaminer, and we are tied 3-3. 17-15 now left in the third. And they've held a lot of professional wrestling events at the Expo Hall, concerts, and the like. And we have another penalty. It's slashing against Dirk Graham. Graham is with Chicago, so bully for us. Another power play for two minutes. Another penalty, Larmer tripping. So I believe we're now a 5-on-3 advantage for a minute 49. So could Tampa Bay get the go-ahead goal? Seminoff slashing for two minutes. So it's now 5-on-4. 
And then Chicago will get the delayed power play as the penalty minutes pick up. Terry Crisp was the first coach of the Tampa Bay Lightning. If you case you were wondering. Long shot saved by Balfour. A 3-3 tie in this very first Tampa Bay Lightning game, a first regular season game. First game that counts with 13 and a half minutes to go. And we're going to try to do at least one more game for you before we put this first part of the series to bed. We're not going to do every game, but we're going to pick up pivotal points of the season and then play at least a couple. Like I said, I want each video to go, up, go at least an hour, and I'll show you some of my GM moves. And let's see, it is holding penalty against Doug Crossman. Crossman wearing number three. So a two minute power play for Chicago. In the attack zone. In the top circle. Or it was in the top circle. And here are the lightning going here. Eight minutes to go in the third. And another face-off, this time in the lightning attack zone. Six minutes and 26 seconds left to go. Not a lot going on. This game reaches the 55 minute mark. See what the Blackhawks can do. A 3 3 tie. 4.08 to go. And another face off just outside the attack zone of the Lightning. Shot saved by Young. Turnover in the Lightning's defensive zone and a penalty against Goulet for tripping number 16 for Chicago. So Tampa Bay now with a, with a chance to go ahead. Two-minute power play with three minutes to go or thereabouts. Chicago with a rush. No goal. And a battle in the neutral zone, won by Chicago as they briefly moved it into the attack zone. We're down to the final minute of regulation. And a face-off in the lightning attack zone. And Chicago clears it. They go on the attack. Last 30 seconds of regulation. And we go to overtime. It is 3-3. We'll drop the puck, and we will start a five-minute sudden death period. It's five. In back in these days, it was five against five, not four on four as it is now. And if we go without a winner, I believe it's a tie in these five minutes. So the Tampa fans watching the first ever Lightning game got free hockey. Two minutes and 50 left in the OT. Two minutes, 10 seconds. It's the team skirmish in the neutral zone for the most part. The last minute of play coming up and an icing. That moves it back to the Chicago attack zone. Last 30 seconds. This is looking like a tie, so the Lightning didn't lose their first game, but they didn't win it either. It is 3-3. Three three. 
Nanton Cole picked up the star, as did Steve Warmer, as did Doug Crossman. Nanton Cole was on the ice 29-13. So I want to look into that. Maybe he, maybe he was out there a little too long. Uh, nobody had a bad game for either team. And that's it. So that took half an hour. And it was 3-3. Three, three. So I want to look into why. Oh, because he was a right wing. And we don't have too many more right wingers. So I'm going to go to the back to the free agent center first. Let me continue out of the game today. Let's look at the standings real fast. You're not going to see a lot because most teams have only played one game. We picked up the point. We are in the Norris division along with Minnesota, Detroit, Toronto, Chicago, and St. Louis. This, that, and that was true. And then in subsequent seasons, we moved to a more of an Eastern Conference. So, let's check the free agent center and see if I can pick up another right winger. No, not a political right winger. A right winger position in hockey. So, again, I'm going to look... Let's see, we have we have a whole bunch of Russians we could choose. Uh, I'll take this fellow here, Astra Kentstev, or Kenetstev. Oh, I give up. Uh, <laughs> offer him a contract, meet the demand, ask for the response, submit the offer. So we're picking up a bunch of Russians. <laughs> <laughs> Romer Hammerlick saying I'm ready to play and uh, Astro whatever his last name is uh, says he will sign for, for a whole deal here and I'm also going to pick up Britza or Breza and offer him a contract He wants 245 for three. I have plenty of room. I have 17 million, so I will meet the demand, ask for the response, and submit the offer. Check my mail. And he signed up. So nicely done. We're gonna we're picking up some talent. I don't know what difference it'll make, but let's see here. So we're going to go play our next game and show you that. It's October 10th, 1992. We're playing at Minnesota. AI lines. Continue. And we're going to play this game. So we're up in Minnesota. Now my face gen showing up, but the other teams is not. Oh well. Okay, I'm in white, and the North Stars are in green. And we're playing game number two of the season. We tied our first game. I don't know what Minnesota did offhand. And that was Dave Gagne, or Gagne. And again, you should be cheering your home team and not booing them. So Gagne with the goal. He's wears number 51. And it's 1-0 in favor of Minnesota. The first ever hockey game I ever went to was Tampa Bay at Minnesota, but it was at home for Tampa Bay. And what I remember about it was Pat Jablonski got off to a bad start. He gave like a, like two goals within a minute, or like a minute, minute and a half. And Terry Chris pulled him right away, and he threw a tantrum uh, on the bench, which I think made ESPN and, and the channels, the sports channels of the day. Here we have three and a half minutes gone by first period. It's one nothing North Stars. Of course, they would move to Dallas eventually and become the Dallas Stars. Beating Buffalo in the Stanley Cup of 1999 on a controversial Brett Hall goal. If I remember the controversy correctly, it was that Hall was in the crease. 
and he should not have been. You don't see the North Star's logo here, which is kind of interesting. It just says, it just looks like it has the logo of the Dallas Stars up here with Minnesota. Twelve forty left in the opening period. I forgot to show you the shot summary at the end of the game, but it's like forgetting the number of hits each team gets in a baseball game. Yeah, it's helpful, but you don't know. Mike McPhee, number five, thirty-five. I'm sorry, gets called two minutes for holding. So the Lightning have a power play. This is their first ever road game. I do not remember what happened in real life the first time the Lightning played on the road. I do remember they were a better home team than they were a road team. They didn't really win a lot of road games. And they played in the basically the Western Conference, the Campbell Conference, and... That led to a whole bunch of the West games being played on the West Coast, and you had to stay up late to listen to them. Uh, most of the Lightning games were on 970 WFLA back then. And we go on with the first period. It is still 1-0 Minnesota. And on we go. See it for yourself. Five minutes and 15 seconds left to go. Four minutes left in the first period. I was just looking at some news on this. January the 8th, holding call against Bergevin of Tampa Bay. So Minnesota with the power play. They are in the, in the dark green, tripping against Anderson of Tampa Bay. So Minnesota now with a two-man power advantage. Two-man power play, five on three. I always used to love that little moment where, you know, one of the players is getting too frisky with a face-off, so the linesman excuses him and says, you get out, put another guy in. Now I'll drop the puck. Okay, so Tampa Bay gets out of their power play jam. Under a minute to go first period. Just checking some news out on Twitter, which some of you will be aware of as I record this. End of the first period, it is one nothing. Minnesota. It involves Twitter, and it involves somebody who tweets a lot, just getting suspended. Uh, interference call against Hartman, Mark Hartman. I would tell you who it is, but you could probably figure out. That's a two-minute penalty for t uh, Minnesota to go on the power play. 1943, left in the second. Holding against Mike Tenorti. He wears number 42, and he plays for Minnesota. So I think we're dead even on strength now. Four on four for a minute 30, and then Tampa Bay gets the very brief power play. Not a bad game for Tampa. Uh, let's see. In sportsmanlike conduct, Adam Creighton. So now Minnesota with a power play of 33 seconds. Another nice save by Young. Another face-off. 
in the uh, Minnesota zone. Fighting Joe Recchi gets called five minutes for fighting. So let's see who he was on the dance card with. It was Craig Ludwig. Shots at this point are 15-7 in favor of Minnesota. So Tampa Bay, not a, not a, not a team you don't want to toy with. And Wendell Young with another save. Tampa Bay not getting uh, good good looks at the goal as we approach the midway point of the second period. Fourteen and a half left to go. Forty left to go. Second period. So you continue to watch the action here. Might have time for one more game. Like I said, I want these videos to be at least an hour long. So if this ends before we reach an hour, I'll try to hurry up and do another one. And let's see here. Another face-off. I like the 2D animation, but and that's a goal for Minnesota. I don't know why they're booing, but they are. Courtnall assist from Madano and Ludwig. And it's 2-0 Minnesota. 8.40 now left in the second, so the goal coming at 11.20. If it looks like uh, at some point during the season they're not going to make the playoffs, I will just go to sim mode on these games. But we're not there yet because this is just the second game. Bergevin, Bergevin, or Bergevin, two minutes for hooking. And Minnesota again with a power play. I have to take a look at how the penalty minutes are shaping up after two periods once we get to that point. So I think Tampa Bay has picked up the bulk of the penalties here. So 2 nothing North Stars. At the about the five minute mark to go in the second period. And a goal for the Lightning. That is Adam Creighton, Creighton unassisted. And it's 2-1. 4.56 left in the second period. So light, life for the Lightning. And that's what you want to see. try to do this once a week, but we will probably wind up doing this uh, at least two or three times a week, doing this for an hour, and taking you through the 92-93 season. Sometimes it looks like Nintendo ice hockey, and sometimes it looks like an air hockey game. Lightning still have it. Less than a minute left in the second period. A 2-1 North Star lead, but the Lightning got the last goal, so they have momentum working for them a bit. Cote. And a face-off in the Lightning attack zone. Uh, but before that, we reach the end of the second. It's 2-1 Tampa Bay. And there you see the options that you can go through. 
in the box score, it's 24 shots for Minnesota, 13 for Tampa Bay. Penalty minutes, 15 Tampa Bay, 9 for the Lightning. 9 for Minnesota, I should say. And G-A-T-A and F-O-W, I don't know what that means. So let's drop the puck for the third period. We have about 45 minutes into this video, so we'll probably get another game in. And a goal for Minnesota. Trent Klatt, assist by Alec and Machevic, and it's 3-1. Don't know why the crowd would boo the home team. I guess that's an error in the sound effects. I wonder if that could be fixed. If it can be fixed, just leave a comment in this YouTube video. I would appreciate it. And I appreciate you all dropping by, 93 subscribers, to this point in time on my YouTube channel. So Minnesota trying to add to their lead with under 14 now left in the third period. Lightning with a tie in their first game, so this would be the first ever loss for the Lightning. But they're an expansion team, and that's more expected than not. Penalty again, Spurquist for holding. So Tampa Bay now shorthanded again. And a goal for Minnesota, which moves him up 4-1. Gagne assists from Madano and Tenorti. And now it's a three-goal lead, and you know what Don Cherry says about three-goal leads. They're the most dangerous in hockey. In real life, in 2021, that's a penalty against Bergevin and Tampa Bay. Letting this one slip away midway through the third. They're about to play, and a power play goal for the North Stars. Dolan assisted from Tenorti, 5-1. I don't coach the team, but I would think about putting another goalie in with the score 5-1. And I just coach the Lightning. I don't coach the national teams. I just, I'm Joe Average. That's my, my GM name, Joe Average. In real life, the regular season about to get started in 2021. Of course, it will be shortened because the 2019-2020 season took, took so long because of COVID. Uh, with uh, several months of suspension, they played the playoffs in the summertime. 6-1 Minnesota. Courtnall assisted from Johnson and Sh uh, Tommy Shodine. I don't know. And they're going to keep Wendell Young in. Even though it's 6-1. But I don't coach the team, so I'm not responsible for pulling the goalie or, or putting a, the backup goalie in. So it's 6-1. Wendell Young not having a good game. Under five. Now left in the third period. This is the kind of game you just want it to be over with. Can the Lightning get a, a goal here to make things look good? Holding penalty against Jim Johnson. 
So Tampa Bay will get the power play. 326 now left in the game. I'm a Florida boy calling hockey. I'm, I don't think anybody's going to confuse me for Jiggs McDonald. Under two to go, or Mike Emmerich? Em Emmerich. I always thought Emmerich was one of the great play-by-play -play announcers of any sport, pound for pound. You know, he had 70 different verbs for a pass in hockey. Emmerich, of course, Emmerich retired last season. And I always thought he was great for hockey. And that's it. The game is over. It's 6-1. That's how that ends. Minnesota winning. Tampa Bay players with a good game. Ramage, and that was it. Nobody had a bad game. Hammerlick was the ice leader at 23-35. Madano, Tenorti, and Dolan all had good games for uh, Minnesota. 35 shots for... Minnesota 19 for Tampa Bay. So that's how that ends. That was a bit of a waste. So we are still not at the one hour mark, so we have time for one more game. Fio, Fio Flurry had a good game. 6 5 win over Calgary over Edmonton. I did not get to go. Three goals and no assists for three points. And Pavel Bure also had a hat trick. And let's see here. He plays for the Vancouver Canucks. So let's go to Chicago. And this will be our last game on this first part of the FHM 7 Birth of the Bolt series. And here we go. Tampa Bay in white, Chicago in the red. Tampa Bay a loss and a tie. And their tie was against Chicago. So we'll just let you watch this, because I've pretty much said all I could say. And let's see, the first penalty goes to Lafreniere. Number 15, and that would be Tampa. So Chicago on the power play for two. Another penalty against Tony HRKAC, which is Chicago. So they're at even strength for a bit, and then Tampa Bay gets a power play for a bit. And off we go.
midway through the first period of no score. As you see that lovely little Chicago Blackhawk logo that I imagine one day will be replaced by something else with political awareness being what it is in today's world. Because you don't have the Washington Redskins anymore and you don't have the... Uh, well, the Cleveland Indians will go away after this season in 2021, so I, I imagine someday they'll come after the Blackhawks. Larmer picking up a penalty for unsportsmanlike conduct. How I'm planning to do this, and this, this is just kind of me thinking out loud here, is a fighting penalty, Adam Creighton, and who was his dance partner? Oh, we had a nice little scrimmage. Creighton picked up a five-minute penalty, and Rennick five minutes for fighting and a ten-minute misconduct. So he got in a fight with Rennick, and Rennick got the worst of it, at least penalty-wise, which probably means he won the fight. <laughs> How I'm planning to do this is I'm going to go month by month. Like, I'll show you the first few games of October. And then I will sim out October. And then when you see the next part, I will be in November. And then I will sim that out. And that's how I'm planning to do that. But we will show you all playoff games uh, once the Lightning make the playoffs. And I'll try to show you uh, all the possible Stanley Cup winning games like I did in in the uh, Hartford Whalers series I was doing, although I wasn't able to do that the first two years. Hopefully with FHM7 I'm able to do it a little better. Um, still no score. Play got a little chippy here in the first period. Chicago on the attack. But the Lightning break that up. Three minutes and 13 seconds now gone by, uh, left to go in the first. Nice save by Young. Deflected back out towards the blue line. And here we go again. Of course, you can't do time of possession in, in hockey because teams trade possession so many times, it's, it wouldn't be worth it. Somebody would be bound to make an error. I guess you would have to, you know, do that with an aid at the computer if you were ever to do it. Slashing penalty against Sean Chambers, 29 of Tampa Bay. So with 31 seconds left in the opening period, Chicago is going to get a power play for two, which will carry over into the second. And that's it. We have played 20, and we're tied. No score. So both teams assemble at center ice. Tampa Bay won the faceoff. And tripping against Greg Gilbert. So I believe Tampa Bay will have the power play. No, I'm sorry. It's Chicago. I'm smart enough to know if you're French, it's not Gilbert, it's Gilbert. Young with the save. He held on to it. Faceoff. Tampa Bay trying to get their first goal of the game. Only scoring once against Minnesota in the game you just saw. Sixteen forty now left in the uh, second period. Still no score. Of course, they are changing the alignment of the National Hockey League, I guess, to make it more COVID-friendly. All the Canadian teams will be in one division, which will be kind of interesting. The Lightning got moved to the Central. They won't be playing the East teams, but the Lightning are so good right now, that really won't matter where they play. Two-minute minor tripping, Joycelyn Lemieux. So, Tampa on the power play for two. So, Rennick must have picked up a game misconduct because he is still 
down here on the bottom, 27. I'm guessing it's a game misconduct. I didn't see any indication of that. About 11 minutes left. A dead even game with no score, but you kind of wonder how long that'll stay going. Eight, eight minutes and 45 seconds left to go in the second. And again, it's a very tight defensive game. But with... Uh, oh, R uh, Rannick is out, so he, he served his 10-minute misconduct. So I see 12 down there, not 27. In fact, he is on the ice, Jeremy, Jeremy Rennick, so he, he had a lot of time in the old sin bin. Fifteen minutes. And they did not kick him out for the game. Under five now left in the second. No score. Tripping against Ken Hodge. Hodge wears number 10. He is with Tampa Bay. I don't believe he was on the Lightning. He must have been a player I picked up. Three minutes to go. Second period. Still a tie. And that's holding against Jeremy Rennick. He's picking up the penalty minutes big time. He's up to 17 in this game out of what well, we've now played 37 minutes and 39 seconds. Hooking against Larianoff. Larianoff. Larian off, Larian off, or I give up. And now it's four on four. And then Chicago gets the delayed power play. Larian off, Larian on off, Larian off, something like that. 20 seconds left. Chicago with it, and we have played two, no score. Going to period three. Eighteen and a half minutes. Left in the third. Hope you're enjoying this very first part of the brand new FHM 7 series we're doing here on the Big Polly's World of Sports Sims channel. After this game, we'll bid you all adieu and put this up on the old YouTube for consumption tonight. Fifteen forty-three now left third period. We are still at nil-nil. Couple of shots on Young. He saved both. Tampa Bay clears the zone. They're on the attack. And they lose possession. It goes back to the Tampa end. Face-off. In the Tampa attack zone, I guess they got called for icing. A 
And play moves around back and forth. Shot saved again by Young. Young's playing well. 12.25 left to go. A great performance for Young after giving up so many goals. Six against Minnesota in our second game tonight. A goal for Tampa Bay. Doug Crossman unassisted. And with 11.15 left, could Tampa Bay get their first ever win tonight and their first ever road win? Would be a good way to end uh, this first part of the series. And then we will come back in part two and show you some games from November of 1992. Under nine minutes to go. Can Tampa Bay hold on? After this game was scoreless for the longest time. And the puck going all over the ice. And that was called icing, so a face-off in the Chicago attack zone. Under seven to go. Chance for Tampa Bay to go 2-0 to Kent. A tripping penalty against Rob Ramage of Tampa Bay. So Chicago now five on four for the next two minutes. 628 and Chicago has tied it. Don't let the booing score you. It's Jeremy Romnick singing a redemption song here. Herkak and Chelios with the assists and we are at 1-1. Assist assist as Kenny Main used to say on ESPN. So could we be going to overtime again between these two teams? These te teams, teams played in Tampa to an overtime tie. Tampa or Eastern Hillsborough County, which is where Tampa is? You be the judge. And let's see here. That's icing, so that goes back to the Chicago zone. And five-minute major fighting Hartman. And who did he get into a fight with, pray tell? Dirk Graham was his dance partner. So they will sit it out for five minutes. They can come back 39 seconds into the overtime if we have one. Icing. So Tampa Bay on the attack zone. Three forty-four to go. See what we have here. We're under three minutes. It's a tie game at uno a uno. Icing. You go to the Chicago zone. Chicago having trouble transferring into the attack zone. Under a minute. One more face off just outside the blue line on Tampa Bay's half of the ice, the defensive half of the ice. Ten seconds left, and we go to overtime. It's 1 1. Astra Kantsev having the best game for Tampa Bay. His game rating is 70. And let's see here. Goulet has a 72 game for Chicago. You see him there. So let's play the overtime and let's get out of here. So we've had three games for you and two of them have gone to uh, the five minute overtime. Can either team get a goal here in these five extra minutes? I wouldn't mind getting two ties out of three games. I think that's good for an expansion team. Of course, the Lightning came in the same year of the San Jose Sharks, 
And then the following year, it was the Florida Panthers coming into the league, and I forget who they came in with. Tripping for Crossman, and now Chicago will have a power play the remainder of the game. Minute 52. Either the game will end tripping against Bergevin. And it's now five on three, so Tampa Bay holding on to dear life. Trying to get a point here, but they cannot. And that's it, 2-1. We'll see who got the last goal here in a moment. 38 saves by Wendell Young, 18 for Brian Hayward. Rinnick took a star, Young was a star, and so was Doug Crossman. Let's see who got the last goal. It was Jeremy Rennick, uh, his sixth goal of the year already, a power play goal. rennick has been unstoppable. So we will sim out the rest of October. The next game for us will be the St. Louis Blues. And let's see here. That's going to do it. Money for free agents, 16 million. Money for extension, 17. How is my... Let me see here if I can find what my reputation is. My job security is down to 78. Hmm. Okay. So that's it for this very first part of F the FHM 7 series, the birth of the bolts of Tampa Bay Lightning. When we come back, we will have November. We'll go through a few games of the November calendar. This has been Big Polly coming to you, wishing you well. Godspeed and God bless wherever you are and uh, all over the world. And whenever you see this, bye-bye for now, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it.